this is Captain Chaudhary. Today I am going to speak about grain and grain loading. A person joins a bulk carrier or general cargo ship for the first time and uh, he has to load the grain. Let us see how he should go about it. What are things he should do before loading the grain? What preparations can be done in respect of loading of the grain? Grain first of all, let us see what is the definition of the grain. Grain is uh, wheat, maize, barley, rice, rye, uh, the pulses, the seeds and the processed form thereof which behave similarly to the grain in its natural form. So uh, let us assume that we are talking about the grains like wheat or maize. What is the problem in respect of grain? The problem in respect of grain is grain in bad weather, heavy rolling might shift on one side. right? Uh, if there are voids, the grain will move upwards towards the void. If it's a partly filled compartment, the grain will shift on one side. And unlike the liquid, it may not return back. In fact, it might invite more grain to come on the listed side. And in certain cases, the ship might capsize. Now, the grain code became mandatory on 1st January 94. All the ships which are less than 500 GRT, or the ships which are existing ships also have to comply with the grain code. Grain code has got two parts, part A and part B. Part A deals with various provisions in respect of uh, stowage and securing uh, document of authorization, including uh, various fittings which can be put. Part B deals with the guidance in respect of calculations, calculations in respect of the healing moments. If you look at Solus, chapter 6 deals with the cargoes. Chapter 6, part A is general. And in this part, it says that the shipper has got absolute responsibility in respect of providing the information in respect of cargo in advance. In advance means master is aware about the characteristic of the cargo that is being loaded. He can take precautions. He can take a, a precautionary measure to ensure that the cargo is stored safely and it is carried safely. So that's the responsibility of shipper. Now this information has to be given and written in the prescribed form. Right? Part C of chapter 6 is carriage of grain. It says that in addition to any other uh, requirement, in addition to any other regulation which the ship might be complying with or following, if the ship has to load grain, ship has to comply with grain code. Thus, uh, chapter 6 part C makes the grain code mandatory. Now there is this concept of angle of repose. What is angle of repose? When the grain is uh, poured freely on a surface, grain or any non-cohesive cargo in general poured on the surface freely, what angle the sides, what angle is made by the side of cone with the horizontal is angle of repose. Now, if you see uh, IMSBC code, there are three categories of angle of repose and accordingly, there are three different ways in which the trimming should be done. That's a different topic. Right now, we are talking about grain. The grain generally has a low angle of repose. Now, there is a relationship between the angle of repose, the angle of hopper and the amount of roll. Now, please understand that a ship that has loaded grain in addition to the grain stability criteria must sail from a port with the grain level trimmed in all the holes and you can't have heaps in the holes you can't say that uh, i have one heap on the port side in another hole there is a heap on the starboard side and there is no list no you can't sail like this you should sail from a port with grain level trimmed in all the holes and the vessel upright what is the reason that the ship should sail with grain level trimmed the reason is if we leave the grain like uh, at angle of repose like mountains are formed in the hold then even if the ship rolls by a few degrees the grain will shift on one side whereas if the grain is level trimmed if the grain is level trimmed say in partly filled compartment and suppose the angle of repose is say 22 degrees right so until the ship rolls up to or more than 22 degrees the grain is not likely to shift so that is the reason the ship must sail from a port with grain level trimmed in all the holes right and the vessel upright so now 
what is the relationship between angle of hopper and angle of repose so normally the hopper tank that is a triangular tank on upper side the wing tanks as we say the lower part of these tanks is called uh, the lower side of the hopper tank and this uh, lower part of the hopper tank should make an angle with the horizontal preferably more than 30 degrees that is what is advised in the crane core that means it would be generally more than the angle of repose of uh, most of the grains that you carry if it is done this way that means if the holes have got the tapering surfaces on top so that the grain will go into the corners then the hold is called self trimming hold so uh, later on we will learn that when a compartment is filled untrimmed it means that the compartment is self trimming type a filled compartment trimmed would mean that a filled compartment that needs trimming for example a general cargo vessel on the general cargo vessels generally on the twin decks we have uh, the trimming hatches about four on one side four on the other side and in addition to that the gangs may go down in the lower hold while the grain is loaded full through the ladders also same thing in the twin deck the gangs may go inside the hold that is lower hold or twin deck through the ladder through the trimming hatches and they can pull the grain uh, towards the periphery and they make sure that the maximum grain is pulled inside so that minimum of void is there but when we say filled compartment trimmed there is always a void on top of the grain so in general we may say that the angle of hopper of top side tank should be more than angle of repose generally we have in case of grain let us try and understand grain stability criteria now during the rolling or bad weather it is assumed that the grain would shift uh, by an angle of something like 25 degrees and in certain areas like 15 degrees okay now this grain when it shifts account is taken about the grain shifting in the filled as well as uh, the partly filled compartments when the grain shifts and whatever assumptions are done in respect of the shift of grain the ship should demonstrate that the angle of twist will not increase more than 12 degrees the maximum angle that would occur because of assumed shift of grain should not be more than 12 degrees or it might be a smaller angle as determined by the administration depending on what is the deck has immersion angle now that is one criteria now i would like to tell my student how the gz curve should be drawn with the information that is given in the stability book so uh, we have this kn curves what is kn curve basically i will just explain with a simple diagram this is the ship heel this is the initial water level this is the center of buoyancy this is initial upright through the center of buoyancy somewhere here you might have g and then because the buoyancy is shifted buoyancy of these wedges is shifted parallel and proportional you have the shift of center of buoyancy of the ship b comes to b1 and there is an upright from b1 and downward force at g the transverse distance between them is called gz now this gz if we imagine that the center of gravity is not here center of gravity hypothetically suppose it comes to the keel right then if i draw a line parallel to gz and now i find out the thwartship distance between this point k and the center of buoyancy then this is called kn so this is the kn sometimes uh, uh, you want to know why the information like kn is given now in this diagram kn is parallel to gz why kn information is given by the shipyard the reason for that is the ship might have any kg in different voyages the kg might be different so any time you want to find out what is the writing lever all you have to do is subtract this part from the kn kn is from here to here subtract this part from the kn and this part is nothing but kg sin theta now this angle is theta if you minus kg sin theta you will get the writing lever gz so actually what happens is this kn or cross curves which are given in the stability book right they are given for different displacements and they are given for different angles of heel 
So what you have to do is for your displacement pick up the KN values for different angles of heel and from every value subtract the respective kg sin theta and then you get gz curve. When you create the gz curve it appears like this. This y axis is giving the values of gz. x axis is the heel. So this is heel axis and this is writing lever or gz. Now what you have to do is you have to add up volumetric healing movements of different holds. They might be partly filled compartment, they might be full compartment. You have to uh, uh, add up the volumetric healing movement. And sometimes the volumetric healing movements may have to be applied by an appropriate factor like 1.06 or 1.12. After doing that, the total volumetric healing moment is divided by stowage factor and displacement to give you lambda 0. So actually uh, lambda 0 is equal to total volumetric healing moment divided by stowage factor of the grain into displacement. Now this lambda 0 which you have got multiply this with cos of 40. So what you will get is lambda 40. So lambda 40 is equal to lambda 0 into cos 40. So actually what you are doing, basically what you are doing is you are trying to draw a cosine curve for lambda 0. I will explain you. Now sine curve is 0 at 0 but cosine curve is maximum at 0. So suppose I want to draw, suppose this is lambda 0 value and I want to draw a cosine curve at 90 degrees it will become 0 it will run like this at 90 degrees it will become 0 and then at 180 degrees it will become minus 1 so this is 90 degrees at 90 degrees the cosine curve becomes 0 at 180 degrees it is minus 1 at 0 it is plus 1 this is what is the cosine curve? What we are trying to do is we are trying to draw a cosine curve from uh, 0 degrees to 40 degrees. So we can roughly assume that it is a straight line. A small stretch of cosine curve can be considered as straight line. So what we do is mark lambda 0 here and at 40 degrees you mark lambda 40 and then join it with a straight line. What you are trying to do is drawing what you are trying to do is you are drawing part of the cosine curve. Now where this this is called healing arm curve this is called this is called healing arm curve this is called writing arm curve as you know the intersection will give you the angle of list or heel as they say which is after the assumed shift of grain has taken place after the grain whatever as per assumption have has shifted it will give rise to this angle and this angle should not be more than 12 degrees or a smaller angle that is determined by the administration so uh, this part is over now let us try and understand what is this residual area between the writing arm curve and the healing arm curve okay now this is the left boundary of the residual area I'm going to do the shading of the residual area but what is the right side boundary so it is the lesser of 40 degrees angle of flooding which may be 41 degrees or maximum separation between the two curves if you assume the extension of healing arm curve like uh, you know cosine curve with the divider you can find out where is the maximum separation say maximum separation is at 43 so out of these three uh, standard angle 40 degrees and 41 angle of flooding and 43 maximum separation between the curve the smallest is 40 degrees so we have the right side boundary of this residual area at 40 degrees now this area should not be less than 0 0.075 meter radian this is the second criteria now the third criteria is if you put the tangent at origin tangent at origin I tell the students that what you should do basically you don't know this side of the curve tangent at origin can be drawn by joining with a straight line the curve going along the curve up to say about 6 degrees which is small angle of heel and extending that line and read 
the height of this tangent at 57.3 degrees. So the height that you get over here, this is called GM. Now this GM should not be less than 30 centimeter. That is the third criteria. So we have seen uh, the grain stability criteria, quickly revising that. Now this intersection that you have got of healing arm curve and writing arm curve, the angle that it gives should not be more than 12 degrees or it may be uh, administration might give a smaller angle depending on the deck as immersion, weather etc and ship, ship's condition. Now there is this residual area. The right side boundary is smaller of angle 40 degrees, angle of flooding and angle of maximum separation. And this residual area should be more than or equal to 0 0.075 meter radian. When you draw a tangent at origin, extend it and measure the height at 57.3 degrees, it gives you GM and GM should not be less than 30 centimeters. Now next I want to talk about a situation where the document of authorization is not provided. Document of authorization is a certificate given by classification society on behalf of administration that the vessel if loads the grain as provided in the conditions, conditions of grain stability book will satisfy grain stability criteria. Which means that along with the document of authorization, you should have grain stability book also. It is not just a piece of paper. It is supplemented by a full-fledged grain stability book. If the ship does not have document of authorization, it is the responsibility of master to satisfy the administration or the contracting government of the port of loading on behalf of the administration that for the intended voice the ship is loaded safely. In general, in Regulation 9, they have specified as to what all things should be satisfied by a ship which is uh, loading grain and the ship does not have document of authorization. So various conditions are there. Condition number one being the ship, the amount of grain that is loaded on the ship should be not more than one third the dead weight. The compartment which are full should have center line division and if center line division is not there the saucer might be permitted in place of the center line division. Partly filled compartments should be level trimmed and then they should be secured. Secured with wire mesh and various uh, securing methods are given grain code or they should be over stored with compatible cargo. The hatches of the filled compartment trimmed hatches of the filled compartment trim means the compartments needing the trimming should be closed and secured. And the last criteria is throughout the voyage the GM of the vessel after correction for free surface should be 0 0.30 meter or L B V D in the bracket 0.25 B minus 0.645 under root VD B bracket close divided by a storage factor into displacement into 0 0.0875 whichever is more. Now in this formula length and breadth means length of all the the total length of all filled compartment B is molded breadth V is the average void depth 0.25 B B is molded breadth V D and B I have told you SFS storage factor displacement and 0.0875 so uh, these are the conditions and there has to be an undertaking by the master that the ship will satisfy these conditions so this is the situation when uh, you don't have document of authorization Grain is one of the cargoes where even uh, before you start loading, you need to check whether you will satisfy the grain stability criteria. You need to demonstrate to the local administration that you can satisfy the grain stability criteria. So the first thing which chief officer or the master should do is get familiarized thoroughly with the grain code. The grain settles down by 2% they say. So that movement of the grain is downwards. And another thing is grain shifts sideways. So what happens is the grain takes up the place of the voids and where are the voids? Voids are in the upper part of the hole. So if you assume that the grain is taking up the place of the void, that means 
uh, in a thought ship shifting that means transverse shifting of the grain grain moves of course sideways but in addition to that the grain moves upwards also right so we'll see that afterwards but right now let us understand what is uh, volumetric healing moment what is the most simple way of understanding what is volumetric healing moment so suppose here's a hold right and this was the initial level of the grain and subsequently during the grain shift the grain shifts like this so we will assume that the grain shifts this way that means this particular portion or wedge of the grain has shifted here so if I consider the centroid of this wedge then usually the transverse shift would be 2b by 3 2 times breadth of the vessel by 3 actually the reason for that is the centroid is one third from the base as is typically said centroid is one third from the base this centroid is also one third from the base so what happens is when uh, transversely the grain shifts the shifting distance is 2b by 3 you know if the breadth of the ship is say 24 meters so 48 divided by 3 that is 16 meters is the transverse shift of the wedge now there is upward shift also now the distance from this base if you consider this as the base of the triangle the distance from this base is one third of this height and same way the distance of this base from here is one third of the height but when we talk about the volumetric healing moment we find out what is the volume of this wedge multiplied by this distance should be the volumetric healing moment because volume is meter cube and distance is meter so when we multiply the volume with the transverse shift distance we get volumetric healing moment it is provided in the grain stability book now this volumetric healing moment if I divide by uh, stowage factor what is a uh, what is the unit of stowage factor opposite to the uh, unit of density density is tons per meter cube this is meter cube per ton which means when you cancel meter cube against meter cube we get volumetric healing moment divided by stowage factor as weight healing moment so the unit of weight healing moment is tons meter sometimes they say that grain stability book gives you volumetric healing moments why not weight healing moment because weight healing moment is the one which is used in making the GZ curve and subsequently um, trying to satisfy the grain stability criteria the answer to that is when volumetric healing moment is given for various conditions you know all you have to do is divide volumetric healing moment with stowage factor you can use the same information for any stowage factor grain right so we may uh, load grain of various stowage factors so the same information can be used for all the grains that is the reason the grain stability book would give you volumetric healing moment rather than the weight healing moment now the thing is we may be given the volumetric healing moment for filled compartment or partly filled compartment now for every hold you have a triple curve which gives one of the informations as volumetric healing moment now volumetric healing moment you can have for the filled compartment or partly filled compartment and when it comes to the partly filled compartment you may use use volumetric centroid to do kg calculations where should be the centroid of this grain the centroid of this grain should be somewhere here if we take that centroid if we take that centroid then we are trying to make the calculations accurate we are trying to make the calculations accurate but in case you consider 
the volumetric centroid of the whole compartment that means if you take the information regarding the kg of this cargo from the tables from the tables which gives you the position of volumetric centroid to do the kg calculation if you do that then you are doing error on the safer side so there are two ways one you take the centroid of the cargo another one you take centroid of the full compartment so when you are taking the centroid of the full compartment for the calculations you are doing error on the safer side but when you are using the centroid of the cargo for doing the kg calculations you are trying to be accurate so whatever volumetric healing moment you have got for that compartment has to be multiplied with the factor 1.12 so here i have written partly filled compartment use the volumetric centroid to do the kg calculations you don't have to multiply with any factor but if you use centroid of cargo for doing the kg calculation you multiply with 1.12 right now filled compartment there are two situations of the filled compartment filled compartment trimmed and filled compartment untrimmed what is the difference between filled compartment trimmed and filled compartment untrimmed filled compartment trimmed means you fill up the compartment and then trimming is necessary filled compartment trimmed means the trimming is necessary say for example if you load the grain on a twin decker vessel where you have the twin decks the grain that would be loaded could be like this and could also be like this now this is a filled compartment but it needs trimming so what happens is you can lower the gang stevedore gang from the trimming hatches which are provided in the twin deck they will pull the grain outwardly and they will try that the grain occupies a level as high as possible typically say about a feet below the deck and then the trimming gang people can come out from there you might have some arrangements of throwing the grain in these voids but generally it is difficult to fill up the void spaces in a general cargo vessel twin deck vessel so this would be called filled compartment trimmed however much you trim you cannot fill up the compartment to all the corners to your satisfaction wherever you have taken the volumetric healing mo moment for the filled compartment you need to multiply by the factor 1.06 now let us come to the filled compartment untrimmed untrimmed means it does not need the trimming that means if it is a kind of bulk carrier which is like self trimming where you think that the grain would have reached every corner so there are very small chances that the voids will be there uh, within the hold so this is called filled compartment untrimmed because the trimming is not necessary so here you will multiply with the factor 1.00 so have you understood the uh, multiplication by these various factors to the volumetric healing moment that is obtained uh most important is if it is a partly filled compartment and you have taken actual position of the grain for calculation of kg then you need to multiply the vhm by 1.12 now the million dollar question is why do you multiply with these factors you multiply with these factors because volumetric healing moment is all about transverse movement i also told you that the grain while shifting moves in upward direction so this is to allow for the upward shift this is to allow for the upward shift because you have not taken the volumetric centroid of the compartment you have taken the centroid of cargo for doing the calculations so i hope you understand for the partly filled compartment the factor is 1.12 for the uh, filled compartment trimmed it is 1.06 and untrimmed it is 1.00 i would like to show you the triple curve which is given for each hold and this triple curve what information it gives we will discuss about it uh, 
Why it is called triple curve? The reason is it gives three information. Once you know what is the height of the cargo in the port or what is the alleged. Now, uh, you can say uh, this height represents the height of the cargo. You have three uh, curves. Uh, it, you have three curves and you can get to know the kg in meters. You can get a volume of cargo in meter cube and uh, you can get volumetric killing moment in meter raised to 4. So uh, this is the curve of volumetric healing moment. Volumetric healing moment. You can see that the volumetric uh, healing moment is minimum uh, if the cargo is loaded low or the cargo is almost full in the compartment but uh, it looks like volumetric healing moment is maximum when you have loaded the cargo halfway in the hold. Now uh, volumetric healing moment if you have loaded say cargo to this level right where the level cuts or where a line drawn from the upper level of the cargo cuts the VHM curve you come down and you can read the volumetric healing moment of the grain as it is loaded to this height say it may be 2800 meter raised to 4 okay volumetric healing moment now kg kg means when you have loaded the cargo here what would be the kg so curve might start something like this it may uh, go a little flatter towards the end now volume of the cargo that is loaded curve could be something like this and towards the end it might rise up like this so uh, for the present height of cargo that is loaded i can find out what is the volume of the cargo right the volume of the cargo for this height when i read in this scale maybe 3800 meter cube and if I hit this curve, see the intersection of the cargo level and this curve, I can get the kg and kg may be something like 5.1 meter. That means uh, it gives you kg 5.1 means the middle of these two levels. That means the centroid of the actual cargo loaded, how far it is from the keel is 5.1 meters. So this is a triple curve uh, from where I can find out what is the actual volume of the cargo loaded, what is the kg of, what is precise kg of that cargo, that means from the centroid to the keel, and also volumetric killing moment. Sometimes they ask you uh, a question like while uh, making the cargo climb, you find that uh, the volumetric healing moments or the weight healing moments are going beyond the acceptable limit. So what can be done? Assume that the cargo that is loaded in hold number one and the end hold, that means seven or nine, is halfway. That means it is 50% or so loaded. Volumetric healing moment because of both the holds, because of the cargo loaded in both the holds is going to be very high. So what can be done is if it is uh, permissible draft wise if it is permissible um, the load line wise what you may do is you can increase the level you may increase the level in one hold and decrease the level in another hold so that the volumetric healing moment decreases in both the holds sometimes it is required to estimate as to what amount of cargo would have shifted from uh, one side to other side in a thwart shift direction so I will explain that with the help of an illustration. Let's say here is a hold in which the cargo is partly filled. And then what happens is because of the bad rolling etc. Uh, the people can go and hold. Uh, remembering that at departure last port probably they have put insecticide and surely they would have put insecticide. So you need to ventilate, you need to take all the precautions. Uh, for going into enclosed space and then when you go there suppose you find the alleged over here to be 6 meters and uh, in the other hold the alleged here is say 3.6 meters make a right angle triangle you will find that this side over here is uh, 2.4 meters 
Suppose the width of the hole is 24 meters, then a slope can be found as tan theta is equal to 2.4 upon 24. Right? We can find out to what angle the cargo has uh, shifted from one side to the other side. If you see this diagram, uh, it looks like this particular wedge of the grain has shifted over here. So you can clearly see that when we talk about the transverse movement of the grain, transverse shift of the grain, grain not only shifts sideways, it shifts upwards also. Uh, if uh, this height is 2.4 meters in the triangle, from here to here it should be 1.2 meters. From here to here it is 12 meters. So you can find out uh, the area of this triangle. Area of this triangle is half into 1.2 into 12. That is uh, 7.2 meters square. And suppose the length of the hole we assume is uh, 30 meters, then 7.2 into 30 equal to 216 meter cube is 216 meter cube is the volume of this wedge. Now 216 meter cube when it shifts from centroid to centroid which is a two third of the beam that is 16 meters if the beam is 24 meters. So we can say that 216 multiplied by 16 is the volumetric healing moment that is caused because of the shift of grain like this. So 3, 4, 5, 6 meter raised to 4 is the volumetric healing moment. We can also find out how much is the mass that has shifted transversely and how much is the mass shifted vertically upwards. So as you know, if this height is as you know, if this height is 1.2 meters, the distance of centroid from this base would be 0.4, that is one third of 1.2. 0.4 here and 0.4 here would make 0.8. So vertical shift is 0.8 meters. Transverse shift is equal to 16 meters. And the quantity that is shifted is 216 meter cube divided by 2 if we consider storage factor to be 2 for ease of calculation. So 108 tons shifts transversely by 16 meters and vertically upwards by 0.8 meters. So uh, the ship's center of gravity uh, will shift vertically upwards by an amount equal to 108 into 0.8 divided by 24,000. Suppose we say that the final displacement is 24,000 and the shift of center of gravity horizontally would be 108 into 16 divided by 24,000. 24, so there is a shift of ship center of gravity transversely and vertically by this amount. If you have already made the GZ curve, what I'm saying is if the GZ curve is already made and let us say this was the GZ curve, okay. Now, what has happened is ship center of gravity has shifted vertically upwards, right? And transversely, it has shifted by this amount. Uh, the amount is GZV and GZH. So what we need to do is, for upward shift, we need to subtract GZ vertical sine theta from all the writing levers at different angles of E. We have already obtained, we already have the writing levers Right? at different angles of heel. So at different angles of heel, say for example, we talk about uh, 20 degrees. At 20 degrees, whatever is the GZ, we will subtract GZV sin 20. At 30 degrees, we will subtract GZV sin 30. So this way, uh, for all the angles of heel, we need to subtract GZV sin theta. And from every angle of heel, you know, from the writing lever, we also need to subtract GGH cos theta. GGH cos theta is to allow for reduction of writing lever to the listed side. 
to the listed side the stability of the ship decreases because of the uh, decrease in freeboard and several other reasons so what we need to do here is from the gz that we have already got we will subtract gg v sin theta and also subtract ggh cos theta so uh, this can be considered as the curve of ggv sin theta and this can be considered as the curve of ggh cos theta when we apply these two curves like ggv sin theta will be cutting off this area of the gz curve and ggh cos theta will be cutting off this area of the writing lever curve eventually when we subtract these two things the final curve might appear like this so eventually when we subtract these two things from the original gz curve the final curve might look like this right where the vertical size and horizontal size is modified and the curve comes from a negative side and this particular angle indicates the list sometimes you might want to know without going into the hold as to if the grain has shifted in one hold how much what is the quantity of grain that would have shifted so for that let's go to the basic gz curve and suppose on this is the original gz curve of the ship suppose the list that you have got is 7 degrees at 7 degrees i will measure the ordinate that is the writing lever now suppose this writing lever is x then x divided by cos of 7 degrees should be equal to w into d upon displacement so once again you measure the ordinate at the list that has come in so 7 degree was the list i measure the ordinate suppose the height of this ordinate is x meters x divided by cos 7 degrees should be equal to w into d upon displacement we know the displacement we know the d to be equal to 2b upon 3 then i can find out what is the weight of cargo what is the mass of cargo that has shifted right it is assumed that the shifting is uh, between the centroids and the distance between the centroids a thought shift distance between the centroids is assumed to be two times the breadth of the ship divided by three the information that should be provided to the ship's master should be such that he is able to make an accurate assessment of the ship's stability by rapid and simple means in various service conditions and in today's time it would include various impaired stability conditions including the damage stability situations so now, uh, in case of grain, in case of uh, grain loading ship, the master should have uh, certain tools in his hands by which he can find out uh, whether the cargo loading plan is all right. See, uh, one of the tools is you have the KG Max versus draft. This is damage stability criteria, this is intact stability criteria. For a given final draft, you can hit the curve, come to the left, and this will give you the value of Kg that should be maximum so that uh, in case of damage, you are able to satisfy damage stability criteria. Whereas if you hit the intact stability curve and come over here, then uh, you are able to get Kg max which should not be crossed in case you want to satisfy intact stability criteria. So master should see that he has uh, appropriate kg, uh, not more than say 6.4 as given in this illustration, so that he satisfies, so that the ship satisfies damage stability criteria as well as intact stability criteria. I have another tool I will explain you. You might have a table displacement and GM of the vessel when you enter this table with these two argument that is the GM and displacement then uh, we get to a figure and this figure may be uh, say 19,540 tons meter so the weight hailing moment if you have a displacement of 
display uh, 24,000 tons and you have a GM of say for example 2.1 meters then in a situation that your displacement is 24,000 and your GM is 2.1 meter the maximum allowable healing moment in terms of tons meter is 19,540 so when the chief officer enters master's cabin one of the things he will ask him is okay tell me what is the GM what is the sailing draft what is the displacement and then he will ask him what is the weight healing moment the chief officer whatever volumetric healing moment he had divided by stowage factor gives the weight healing moment sir my weight healing moment is 14,000 tons meter okay that sounds fine looks like we are going to satisfy the grain stability criteria this is ready reckoner table this is like a guarantee that is given like if your weight healing moment is less than this figure which is given by this table then most likely you are going to satisfy grain stability criteria